Hello. Recently, I celebrated a birthday. It was my book blog's 10th birthday. Yes, I've been keeping a book blog since 2013, and for the past several years, I've been making videos on this YouTube channel. I really didn't expect all this bookish stuff online to become such an integral part of my daily life. But I love it. It's so wonderful. It's so wonderful reading and discussing books with everyone online. So I thought a fun thing to do to celebrate would be to decide on my 10 favorite books from the past 10 years. Pick a favorite book from every year. And because I've been keeping this book blog, I blog about almost every single book uh, that I read. And I've been keeping records of my favorite books every year. So I'm going to display up here my 10 favorite books from each year, starting in 2013, and choose out of those 10, my favorite book from that year, and keep going through each year. It's also going to be a slightly torturous process because these are my absolute favorites um, from the past decade, uh, which is a lot of books. Um, I read around 100, 110 books every single year, and so that that is counting a lot. Now, of course, this is a definitive list of, of all time. It's just my personal list of what I've happened to have read in the, the past decade, but I think this will still be a fun exercise and an excuse to nostalgically go through some of my favorite reads, and I'd love to know uh, if you also loved reading these books or if you want to tell me about your 10 favorite books from the past decade. I would love to hear about that in the the comments below. So uh, before I get into that, if you'll allow me to um, be a bit sentimental and say thank you, whether you're new to my channel or if you've been following my channel or reading my book blog for um, the, the past 10 years. It's been so wonderful having discussions with so many readers online. Uh, really, again, this has just um, opened up so many opportunities to me and created so much wonderful discussion in, in the past decade that I really didn't anticipate I just started my book blog on a whim and I didn't think it would build up into what it is now. And no, I don't do this professionally. I know some people think that I do because I create so much content online, but I really do it just because I'm so passionate about it and I find it so much fun discussing books with other people online. Um, someone commented on, on a video recently where I, I talked about how I wasn't going to finish reading a book because I wasn't enjoying reading it and um, they they said something in the comment uh, like, oh, how it's it's ridiculous you, you wouldn't finish reading a book um, when you're a professional book reviewer. And no, 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 I am not a professional book reviewer. I, I only read books that I'm interested in and I give my honest responses to them and that's what I, I enjoy doing online. So I hope I can continue to do that. I'm continue to have more conversations with people. Recently, I started an online book club and we've been reading this month, my favorite novel of all time, The Waves by Virginia Woolf. So I'll put a link um, to that online book club below if you want to check it out and consider joining us um, because, uh, yeah, it's been so wonderful hearing people's responses to this book and having a lot more in-depth discussion about it and other books that we read every month. So that's another fun bookish thing I've been doing online. And yes, I do earn a little bit of money from it now, but definitely not enough uh, in order to support myself. Um, this is all just for the pleasure of reading and sharing the, the joy of reading. So now to get into this project and going way back to 2013, uh, here are the my 10 favorite books from that year. And yeah, what a, a great group. Um, Artful by Ali Smith, this group of lectures that she put together as a novel, which sounds like it shouldn't work, but it did. And the way she connects them and creates this character in Mourning is so emotional and powerful. Adam Hazlitt's novel, um, Jim Crace's novel Harvest, um, is this incredibly uh, claustrophobic book about a community 
community and and the dangers of being in an insular community um very creepy and i think that's going to be made into a film in the upcoming months or or year or so um i also read the wasp factory which was an older book um for the very first time oh the goldfinch completely gripped me i i even though that's a really long novel i read it i think in only a few days um because i was so gripped by the plot and and drawn to the character in that story don the tart just has this way of writing that is so compelling uh, i i just can't stop reading her i loved barbara kinsolver's novel um flight behavior um as well I, i thought that was great black bread white beer um by niven govindan is such an inventive novel uh, that uh, is looking at a, a couple that have just experienced a massive loss in their life and how this affects um each of them individually but also as a couple um it's so powerful and niven govindan is such a great writer and i could just talk on and on about all of these books um but to pick out my favorite from this list i think it would have to be the luminaries by elinor catton because this novel really inspired me to start my book blog in the first place um because i read that novel and it's such an epic so complex and wondrous and weird that i wanted to discuss it with other readers and so i started my book blog for that reason to hope to generate some discussion about it and talk to other readers uh, about it and i did and um and and it, it, i had so many great conversations about it and continue to do so um because yeah this is such a big novel that contains so much intrigue and scandal and sexiness uh but also mystery and a uh, complex interesting characters um it's so atmospheric uh, of this time period it's it's really a wonder next in 2014 here are my 10 favorite books that i read that year and oh gosh yeah this really takes me back i mean i remember reading arctic summer by damon galgett which is this fictionalization of the life of em Forster and he does it in such a powerful way the how he approaches the psychology of uh, this this writer and his artistic process but also um his emotional and personal life his sexual life and um, how he portrays that uh is so beautifully done i i just loved that so much and sri hustvet's novel the blazing world about an artist um such an inventive story uh, about a, a woman uh, artist um and who looking at her from many different perspectives and uh and it's such a creative way of looking at a life but also of women's lives in art um it's 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 amazing um oh uh, yeah i could talk on and on about these these novels and um you can see some of my favorite writers creeping up so um so um Joyce Carol Oates um is there with this incredible uh, book of short stories um she wrote called Lovely Dark Deep um her her fiction does get really dark really sinister um so psychologically intriguing um the incarnations such an inventive novel it's a romance that plays out over centuries um through the incarnation of many different lives of these two characters and and what a creative idea but also an inventive way of portraying the history of of China over a long period of time um Sarah Waters um she's another writer that i think just she can compose sentences and create scenes and characters like Donna Tartt in a way that is so compelling i i just can't stop reading her books when i start i start reading them uh and yeah ali smith um is there again i think my favorite from that year would have to be ali smith's how to be both uh, a novel that is so incredibly creative not just in the way it was written but in the way it was published in that you have these two stories of uh one a historical figure and one a contemporary figure and the way the novel was published it starts with one or the other of their stories they kind of split the printing um so you you different readers have different experiences of this book um, which is so inventive and mind blowing and uh and so when i read it i started with the historical time period moving up to the contemporary period but i know other readers had had the different experience and um yeah and i i just i just love this story the way she writes about um art and 
passion and feeling and um, her use of wordplay is so wonderful. Uh, it's such a delight to, to read. I, I was so happy that won the Women's Prize um, that year. Uh, yeah, it's just great. On to 2015, and there are some really great titles uh, on my best of list this year. Uh, a short story collection, Almost Famous Woman, by Megan Mayhew Bergman, uh, which is such a creative idea. She she takes the, the lives of uh, real-life historical women and writes short stories about them and these are figures um, that almost became really famous are kind of notable figures in history but aren't incredibly well known um, and and how she approaches their their stories and uh, and and exploring the the issues that these different women in history went through through this fiction uh, is is so wonderful Lila by Marilyn Robinson is a novel that emotionally gripped me. I'm so tight. I I was blown away by this story. Um, also, there's the first poetry collection to feature on any of my best of lists here, um, Andrew McMillan's Physical. The the way he uses language um, to describe the body and relationships and uh, and our psychology um, is, is so beautiful. Um, and he's publishing his very first novel next year, I think, which is very exciting. Um, Patricia Dunker's Sophie and the Sybil um, uses this um, <laughs> way of uh, literary fiction, um, which I think is kind of one of my favorite kinds of, of fiction, that um, fictionalizing the lives of novelists. Um, so as I talked about with Ian Forrester before, Patricia Dunker um, looks at the life of George Eliot in this novel and uh, and shows her in um, a uh, her romantic entanglements, um, but also the the author describes her own like romantic um, interest in George Eliot in this novel. It's so creative and, and wondrous. And um, there's Joyce Carol Oates's memoir, the the Lost Landscape, which is it's an incredibly personal look at. The author's life, um, which she doesn't often you know, discuss in her writing. It's a real like nostalgic look um, back upon her childhood and development as a writer. But I think my favorite book from this year, from 2015, would have to be A Brief History of Seven Killings by Marlon James. Uh, this incredible epic novel with so many different characters, so much intriguing subject matter, all centered around this real historical event and figures surrounding it. And uh, but um, how he portrays these characters and how they transform over time and um, this, this this changes in their identity. Um, it's, it's so wonderful. Um, this is a like challenging novel, but it's an incredible read. Uh, it's so rich and wondrous. And uh, I was a judge on a book prize that year, the Green Carnation Prize, and we chose A Brief History of Seven Killings as our winner that year, even though it had just won the Booker Prize, but it is such an incredible novel. 2016, and we have Ali Smith again uh, with the first novel in her seasonal quartet, uh, which is such an epic series of books. Uh, the short story collection Dinosaurs on Other Planets by Danielle McLaughlin, uh, looking at contemporary Irish life in such an inventive way. And Under the Odolatries by Chinello Ocperanta, a young woman's coming of age story and wrestling with her sexuality and um, her complicated relationship with her mother. Such a beautiful, powerful book. Uh, the, the Man Without a Shadow by Joyce Carol Oates. Um, her, her novel uh, looking at a very uh, different kind of romance of, uh, of a female doctor and a man who has lost all of his short-term memory and um, so she has to continually reintroduce herself to him. Um, such an inventive love story. And The Title Zone by, by Sarah Moss, this incredibly um, personal and um, beautiful family story. The Underground Railroad by Colson Whitehead, such an inventive novel to take this, this concept of a, a misunderstanding of what the Underground Railroad was, make it a physical thing and use that 
as a way of re-exploring um, the, the history of slavery in America and racial relations. Um, incredible, such a powerful book. But I think my favorite book from 2016 would be Solar Bones by Mike McCormick. Uh, this very striking look at one man's life who's meditating on his life while also feeling, sensing the, the world around him. I don't know if I can adequately describe it, but it is so profound and moving. This, this, this wonderful meditation um, that you just want to sit with and think about and uh, and it's so beautifully and poetically written. 2017 and I do gravitate towards my favorites, don't I? Yes, Joyce Carol Oates is on this list again, but she's an incredible writer. She produces such uh, inventive new books every single year and this year with the book of American Martyrs I'm looking at the the issue of abortion in America which still continues um, even more so um, in the past couple of years to be such a pressing issue in America and she approaches it from such an interesting angle, um, such a powerful book. Um, the next book in Ali Smith's Seasonal Quartet, Winter, um, such, such an atmospheric book. She really captures the, the, the atmosphere of Christmas time and winter in this book in a kind of spooky way. Um, the Parcel by Anash Arani, um, one of the most devastatingly powerful books um, I've, I've read in the past decade um, that it looks at this very serious subject of um, child trafficking, um, child prostitution, and um, but approaches it from um, such an interesting angle and uh, and makes such a powerful statement um, in it. Uh, yeah, that that novel affected me so strongly. And Mina Kandasamy's uh, a novel. Uh, which um, looks at an abusive relationship um, from such a, such a moving in such a moving way, and um, and it's it's so powerful. Um, I've I've never read about domestic violence in such a striking way before. Um, like with this novel, Yi Yun Lee's book is this real like love letter to um, readers, I think, of of capturing um, why reading is such a powerful thing in our lives. And she explores this through the interactions with some of her most famous writers, both uh, on the page and in real life. It's such a striking book. But I think, uh, oh, this is really difficult <laughs> I have to make tough choices, but if I'm going to pick one book from this year, I think it would have to be Lincoln in the Bardo by George Saunders. Mind-blowingly creative book, uh, approaching grief from such a powerful way, um, approaching history from such a complex and interesting way, and and exploring the lives of a number of dead characters um, of Lincoln going to a graveyard to mourn his son and the spirits of all of these strange and wild figures from history creating this chorus um, around him and discussing all of these issues, having all of these, these crazy interactions with each other, but also telling the stories of their lives. It really changed the way I think about how fiction can be written. 2018, and I read a, a classic this year by Muriel Spark, Memento Mori. Uh, I read this aloud um, to to my partner. Um, and uh, it was such a fun experience reading it aloud because it really brought the humor out of Muriel Sparks writing. Um, she she is such a, a witty and a wicked writer um, and how she um, creates these characters and situations and um, the, these catty interactions between these characters, but also this dark mystery of um, characters that um, are left threatening messages saying that they are going to die. Um, most of them are older characters. So it's uh, these older characters reflecting back on their life, but also facing their own mortality. So it's a serious subject matter, but she approaches it in a really humorous and inventive way. Um, Circe by Madeline Miller. Um, I, I loved the, the way she reinvented this figure from mythology um, to 
approach um, her life in a way um, which uh, we can connect with so strongly, which is so imaginative and wondrous that I just loved being drawn into this world. Um, another novel by Joyce Carol Oates, Hazards of Time Travel, which is a kind of science fiction novel where a figure in this dystopian time period travels back to a period of history from Joyce Carol Oates's own early life. So uh, it's it's a very personal book in looking at decades past in her early life, um, but but from the, this this figure from a kind of dystopian future, and um, it's it's so inventive and wild. Sight by Jesse Greengrass. I loved that novel so much. Uh, again, another very inventive novel that. That plays with the form of fiction and the border between fiction and nonfiction um, to to look at a life and um, and the the experience of um, having a child and and look approaching that from such an interesting way. Washington Black by Essay Dugin, this this wonderful adventure novel looking at a young black man who is born into slavery but who has a very scientific mind and following him as he is able to find opportunities to um, express himself intellectually but also obviously the very severe restrictions he comes up against um, during that that time period. Um, Problems by Jade Sharma um, was this very powerful coming-of-age story by a very promising author. Um, Sadly, Jade Sharma died at quite a a young age, Um, but this is such a powerful book. Um, I, I always... I called it like the the um the 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 new like catcher in the rye because I feel like it captured um something about um this experience of coming of age um in in a way which is so striking but if I'm going to pick a favorite book from that year I think it would be Ghost Wall by Sarah Moss um the, this story which engages with history in such um a, a creative way in the taking the past into the present and looking at contemporary issues and relating that to times in the past um, of a kind of camping trip and experiment out in the woods, which goes a bit awry and um, and as a as an experiment of um, trying to live as people in history. Um, it's I don't know if I'm explaining this very well, but it's such a striking book. And also because it's such a slender novel but makes a really big impact. And uh, and I think a book doesn't have to be a really you know, big, long title in order for us to feel its effects. Um, I think it's even more challenging in some ways to write a really slender book that makes a really big impact. And Ghost Wall definitely does that. Ah, I just need to stop and have a sip of a cup of tea um, from this uh, Liza Minnelli mug that uh, Bob the Booker kindly bought me um, for my actual birthday um, recently. Um, So yeah, I love this mug. Okay, on to 2019. And these are my 10 favorites from the year. And this is really difficult. Some of these books I love so much. really stuck with me, made such a big impact on me. Oh, gosh, I don't know if I can make this decision and choose just one from all of these books. Um, there, there are so many great ones, um, Constellations, um, this incredibly moving memoir, um, looking at uh, Sinead Gleason's um, life and the, the very severe health problems she's gone through through her life and how she's got through them and um, the inspiration she's found in art. Such a moving, powerful story. And Robert McFarlane's um, nonfiction book, Underland, such a fascinating fascinating way of looking at um, the layers of history in the physical world and an exploration of that, of going into these spaces, looking into deep time. Um, it's such an incredible book. Uh, Girl, Woman, Other by Bernardine Evaristo, um, one of the joint winners of the Booker Prize that year. An incredibly complex look at the lives of a number of different um, women of color in Britain over uh, a period of time um, from many different points of view, um, having many different perspectives. Um, Oh, such a great book. 
Andrea Lawler's Paul takes the form of a mortal girl. Uh, oh, this this book is so good. Um, I, I it's so much fun. I had so much fun reading this this book um, by Andrea Lawler. I I loved it. Um, it's so it's so wicked and and queer and and playful and uh, and just a kind of modern day Orlando story. Although it says within the book, um, this is not Orlando. Um, but yeah, it's so it's so wonderful. Wonderful. I love that book so much. And The Years by Annie Ernaux, who, who went on to, to win the Nobel Prize for Literature. Um, this, this way of looking at history in a way that I had never thought of before, um, looking at our kind of collective memory versus our personal memory and this way of approaching an understanding of society that I still think about and that still affects me. Um, uh, it's It's incredible that that book but if i have to pick one if i have to pick one it would be dex newburyport by lucy elman i can't help it i just i loved that book so much the the the, the style of it um this 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 way of um of a uh, kind of repetition of building up this uh, way of looking at one character's consciousness over a period of time and these images and words which come back into her thoughts and get mixed up together that really seems to represent um, the the way we think and feel and move throughout the world that just a jumble of of thoughts of all the personal things we're going on that are going on in our lives but also looking at the larger things that are occurring in the world and and thinking about these bigger issues while also looking at the the more intense um everyday issues um that she's she's going through um it's an incredible way of portraying consciousness, one of the most inventive books from the past decade, and I think an absolute wonder. What a great year 2020 was for literature. Some of these books, oh, so good. Um, Minor Detail, another example of, of a really powerful book that's quite slender but makes such a, a big impact. The, the way this book looks at um, history and, and politics and, and conflicts um, within a, a certain region um, is so striking. XX by Brian Hughes, um, this, this wonderful science fiction novel that is also really intelligent, um, looking at at that gave me such a different perspective on like the the origins of of life and consciousness and and the the way this might be understood the way other life forms might be understood um the the pull of of the stars um by Emma Donahue um this very striking and beautifully romantic historical novel and a saint from Texas by Edmund White this incredibly playful look at um, two twins um, who are very different from each other and go on to lead very different lives from each other and looking at their parallel lives and what that says about identity and consciousness and um, the end of Ali Smith's seasonal quartet with, with Summer. Um, such a wonderful book. Love After Love. Uh, the, the emotional impact of this novel. I can still think about it and it brings tears to my eyes thinking about certain scenes and the relationships between these characters. Uh, it's so striking. And uh, the, the mirror and the light, the conclusion of Hilary Mantel's uh, trilogy, um, the, the the impact of, of reading those three books um, so close alongside each other and, and the buildup um, of this complex view of the historical figure of Thomas Cromwell, that's uh, really stuck with me. But the book that really stands out for me this year um, is by Joyce Carol Oates, Night, Sleep, Death, the Stars, a look at family life and uh, in that begins with uh, a, a man being beaten by police officers in a racial attack and goes on to explore a family's um a family's grief and uh, looking at their different points of view and uh, the the complex and intricate 
weavings in a family's life and what binds a family together, um, what divides them, um, how political opinions can intrude upon connections within a, a family and um, how families can come back together, how individuals can reinvent themselves over time in ways that they didn't expect, which are surprising to themselves when they experience devastating events in their life, but they're able to live beyond it and find new meaning and reasons. This novel by Joyce Carol Oates is so powerful and epic and beautiful. It's great. 2021 and oh, so many wonderful books on here. This one sky day, this novel that evokes sensory experience in such a vivid way. I, I can't remember thinking of another novel that describes the senses in this way, the, the smells and the flavors and uh, the colors of the, the world that it describes. Um, it, a book of uh, kind of magic realism um, that is so inventive and wondrous, but also looks at history and, and identity and community relations and politics um, in such a, a striking way. I, I enjoyed reading Detransition Baby so, so much. Um, you have another example of an incredibly powerful slender book of small things like these and Claire Fuller's novel, Unsettled Ground. Um, this oh, such an emotional novel um, about uh, two adult siblings um, that that try to find a life for themselves um, after the death of their mother, which happens at the very start of of the novel, and um, and how difficult it is emerging into the world after having been um, sheltered in a way which hasn't prepared them to live independently. Um, such a striking and original book. Um, I had such a great conversation with Claire Fuller on my channel and also um, with Richard Powers that year. Um, I, I had a Zoom conversation with him where we had such a moving discussion about his novel Bewilderment, um, another very emotional book. Um, if I keep thinking about these books, I'm going to start crying again because I, uh, they brought so many, many emotions to the surface um, when I was reading them. Uh, a, a Shock, um, which is such an interesting novel looking at community life and a number of different characters in London in a very particular location and how he does this in such an inventive way and looking at queer lives um, from such an inventive way. I'm um, so wonderful. And Joyce Carol Oates' short story collection, The Other You, looking at different possibilities in life and um, how, you know, there are certain moments in our lives when our lives could have gone in two different directions and how she explores those different directions simultaneously is so inventive and, and striking. But I think my favorite book from 2021 would be The Love Songs of W.E.B. Du Bois uh, by Honoré Fanon Jeffers. This incredible family epic, which is uh, at once very personal, um, focusing mostly on one character, but also looking at a family's history and how she simultaneously portrays the lives of these characters and individuals from the past while also looking at the present in such a complex and interesting way um, is so striking and has made such a big impact on me. I love that novel so much and I felt like it deserved all of the awards. And that brings us up to last year, 2022. And a lot of these books are still so fresh and vivid in my mind um, because they made such a big impact on me. And uh, yeah, the, the swimmers um, to a way of uh, looking at community life, but also uh, aging and dementia um, in such a striking way. Bola, um, a way of um, looking at histories and a particular um, historical pol political conflict, but also the personal conflicts. And, and it's a love story. I'm um, a tragic love story. Uh, with characters that really aren't very likable, but 
Um, but the story makes such a, a big impact and you grow to care about them and understand the difficult decisions they make, even if you don't agree with them or approve of them. Um, the Colony by Audrey McGee, and again, another way of looking at community and history and colonialism and the, the disappearance of language. Um, and Knights of Plague, um, this wonderful, epic, historical novel that I got so swept into, The Seven Moons of Molly Almeida. I love this novel so much, the, the way um, the playful and uh, dark and comic and uh, complex way of looking at a conflict in Sri Lanka through the eyes of a man who has recently died and returns to interact both with um, spirits and, and ghosts, but also um, people that are left behind and uh, people, some whom he loved, some who were his enemies, some who he thought were friends, but turned out to be en enemies. Um, there are so many mysteries and intriguing elements to this novel that I thought were so uh, incredible. And Demon Copperhead, a novel I, I loved so much was completely drawn into the story of this boy fighting for survival like against the odds and and through his own ingenuity and creativity and intelligence finds a way in the world which feels like it's set against him and I know you'll probably think that Demon Copperhead would be my favorite I'm, I'm another book that I said should be winning all of the awards but I think my favorite from last year would be Elena Knows by Claudia Pinheiro, a novel that's really stuck with me, that I think is so inventive and powerful in its style in creating a murder mystery story that is so intriguing and that you want to know the, the answer to, but also following this character who has a very physically debilitating condition and the struggle she goes through moment by moment trying to solve the mystery of her daughter's death while portraying um, the physical difficulties that she's going through. It gave me such insight and understanding um, for this struggle for someone going through such a difficult condition like this that it really changed my perception of of how different people live and struggle to survive on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, it's such a powerful book and also Claudia Pinheiro's um, new novel, A Little Luck, um, which um, was just translated and published a couple of year months ago. Um, it's such a striking book um, as well. I'm such a powerful writer. So yeah, I think that would be the one book I would say. So yeah, if you stuck with me, then those are the, the 10, my 10 favorite books. So I, I'll, I'll go scramble around my bookshelves and see if I can gather them all together to, to show here on camera. Whew, I did it. I found them all, but I had to get my uh, library letter out, as you can see. So here are my 10 favorite books from the past decade, the 10 years. I think these books are all absolute winners, and I would highly highly recommend them all. Uh, if you've not read all of these books, um, I, I would really suggest you do so. I know it seems like a lot, and this is a lot to hold up. It's really heavy. <laughs> and like I said, I, I, I didn't intend to in choose so many like quite big books, but <laughs> it just worked out that way. But there are some slender ones in there as well. Uh, I, I didn't expect to go on and on <laughs> so so much uh, in this, this video, but once I start talking about my favorite books, I just can't stop stop talking about them. And there are so many other books in this these groups um, that I could easily go on about a lot more. And if I did this any other day, I could have picked a different combination of books. Um, it might just depend on my, my mood of, of what are my absolute favorites. But today, at this 10-year um, mark, these are my 10 favorite books from the past 10 years. I'd love to know in the comments below um, if you have read any of these books or if you want to do this exercise yourself and uh, look at the past decade. Um, tell me what some of your favorite books um, from the past 10 years are. What do you think are the absolute best um, that you would recommend that I read? Because I'd love to get more book recommendations. I love continuing discussing books. So thank you um, for talking about books with me um, for so long. And, uh, and I hope 
hope the conversations can continue. I can easily get beleaguered about the state of the world, uh, but when I start discussing books with with other readers, um, it, it gives me me hope. Um, so not to be too soppy about it, um, but but yeah, it it really lightens my life uh, doing all of this. So thank you for all the bookish discussion we've been having. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna stop now, and I, I hope you're doing well and reading good things. I'll speak to you again soon. Bye-bye.